Hello and welcome to the final edition of Journalist Hangout this week. I am Dr. Arua Joy. On the radar today, Fashola says is not overwhelmed, handling the Ministry of Works, Power and Housing. And later on the program, the world buries Mohammed Ali today. The Journalist Hangout starts now. Since independence, Nigeria's problems have been in three key areas. And Nigerians want constant supply of electricity, a good roads and affordable housing. Uh, but these needs have never been sufficiently met. Uh, as at last year, Nigeria's housing deficit was about 17 million units. And our infrastructural deficit is disappointing. And electricity supply remains abysmally poor. Uh, today, it is Babatunde Fashola's job to meet these needs. But some critics uh, fear that he might uh, be overwhelmed. Uh, yesterday, the minister addressed the skepticism, uh, saying uh, that the ministry was not a bigger than Lagos State, which he successfully uh, governed for eight years. Uh, but this comparison is troubling. Isn't it a mistake to compare? managing a state like Lagos, uh, the smallest state in Nigeria in terms of landmass, to managing three key ministries in one. Uh, my guest today, Baba Jidi Koladio Tichotu. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Good evening, viewers. Tony Waji uh, is around here. Good evening, viewers, and thank you very much. And also, I have Emeka Madunado. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, good evening, today. viewers. Good to be here. Okay, Jide, let me start with you. What do you think? Baba Jide says, I mean, I said Baba Jide, mm -hmm. but today, <laughs> Raji Fashola says uh, he, he's, <coughs> he's, he's been there before. He, he's been at the Ems of Affairs in Lagos, so you can handle three ministries. Well, what, what's the big deal? Well, um, there are problems that um, we all know Fashola is facing in, um, in those ministries. For example, he's unable to give us uninterrupted electricity. It's not entirely his fault because um, Niger Delta militants are breaking pipelines that are meant to supply gas mm -hmm. to the thermal stations. Out of um, we have uh, uh, about 23 gas, I mean thermal stations, they, gas. they rely on gas. So if you can't get gas supply to those thermal stations, there's no way that uh, we will have electricity. So it's not entirely uh, his fault. But there are problems even with transmission, which uh, falls directly under the ministry, under the so uh, supervision of the minister. The minister can say, well, I don't control distribution. Mm. You know, I don't control generation. Mm. But it controls transmission, and there are problems with that as well. We've had um, system failures, four system failures in one month is, is bad enough. Now, talking about comparing, saying that, well, he uh, was governor of Lagos for eight years, uh, that is, uh, is, is, is more difficult to run Lagos than to be a minister. It, it states with 30 ministries and 57 prostitutes on a daily basis. That's how you used to run it. Okay. Um, Lagos, the, the kilometer of roads that you have in Lagos are now up to half of the kilometers of, of roads that you have in Casina alone. Hmm. Casina has 36 local governments. Not to talk of Kano that has 44 local governments. Those are, 41. Those, mm. are, those, <coughs> those are very big states. We are not talking in terms of population. And yes, Lagos has the population. Although by our census, Kano is even uh, more densely populated than, than Lagos. Mm -hmm. the, the reality is federal roads are all under Fashola. So if a single state and when we talk about governors performing, mm. how do we know we see them doing roads? If a single state, a state like, like, um, like Casina, for example, has more than twice the number of roads that Lagos has, yes. and that is not even the biggest state in Nigeria, because mm -hmm. Kano with 44 local government is the biggest. Yes. So you can imagine 
the whole of Niger 36 states. How does he manage the ro roads, uh, roads, construction, rehabilitation across the 36 states where you have federal roads? A lot of those roads are in a very bad state. Of course, the funding that he needs in Lagos State, mm. he will always get yes. to manage the affairs of Lagos. Yes. In the case of federal the, at the federal level, he cannot get all the funding mm. that he needs. Because if we look at what has even been voted for roads in the, uh, uh, in, the, in the budget, it is not enough. I don't think it is even, in, if you really want to do no. serious work, it's not even enough to <laughs> fix bad roads across three states in Nigeria. Mm. The debt that the federal government holds to states that have chosen not to leave those roads the way they are, mm -hmm. they have chosen to fix them, is more than what we have voted for, for uh, to fix uh, uh, roads this year alone in fashion last budget. Mm. So comparing Lagos with, uh, and of course, when you're talking about institutional cabals hmm. that ensure that ministers don't perform, hmm. you have them at the federal level. Are, I, are I talking spoke, about roads alone? I, I'm just talking about roads. Hmm. I think that it's a mistake to give him roads and then give him power. And housing. You know, and housing. Fashola's greatest strength is in infrastructure development. And he has, in my mind, one of the most brilliant commissioners to ever pass through Lagos State in Amzat. Okay. Amzat is a special advisor now. So he's very strong when it comes to roads. Mm -hmm. Now you've added housing. I, you've added ah. um, 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 power. What you are trying to do is to eventually make him jack of all trades and master of none. No. And it's become, you see people now talking about asking, why hasn't Fashola given us life? Why hasn't he done this? Mm. And why hasn't he done that? So it is, uh, it is even foolhardy to begin to compare running Lagos with, with the federal level. And we'll see that in Lagos, it was such a huge success. Mm. But if you ask me, with the problems that he's facing, today we are down, those boys are sure that we are generating maybe around um, 1,500 megawatts. Okay. That is not a success story in the power yeah. sector. But people, the real critics, the virulent critics, will still say, no, no, when it comes to power sector, he has failed. But you cannot say that in Lagos he failed. Okay. But uh, on the strength of what we have on ground, if we are to assess okay. him, you cannot say that he, he, he hasn't failed. failed. Okay. Uh, Tony, what do you think? Uh, he said, uh, there's no big deal handling these uh, three ministries, really. <laughs> and when he, he talked about uh, roads, that he strength there, maybe it was on roads. But you could say that uh, he did much about the IPP, also the, the yeah, power the production. production, and also you could talk about the Lagos housing scheme, also. Maybe he's using that yardstick or those yardstick now to measure yeah. his success in the uh, talking. Just like Judith said, you know, while he was in Lagos, he had you know he had access so to funds. Being the governor of the state, you know, could mobilize from funds for mm -hmm. most of this infrastructural uh, development. But now, as a minister, the budget was just being passed. <coughs> Though, this a year, I saw him yesterday in Abuja. Um, I know, was um, saying he wasn't, he's not, uh, he's not uh, overwhelmed. overwhelmed. But uh, did, did he I look overwhelmed? He, he, he is overwhelmed. <laughs> that we, uh, everybody knows that. But we don't expect him to come and tell yes, say that. So yes. He can handle, because those three ministries we're talking about, none is, for, none, none is performing. I'm sorry to say, but when he was in Lagos, he performed to an mm. extent. But right now, what Nigerians want to see is practical things. If you say you're working, let the people see. But what you're seeing on the street, we don't, we, we don't, we are not seeing the electricity. Tony. We are not seeing the housing. You know, yeah. we're we we not, not seeing any road that they have completed. Okay, maybe because of the budget that, that came out very late. Yeah, um, um, that mm. before the budget, you must have a roadmap. At least you must have a roadmap. You must have a rule. This is what I intend to do. The budget was has been passed over two months now. Okay. And again, okay. He, met, he mentioned something. He said that the difference now is that he's working with new people. And it's like a game of football. When you start playing I, with somebody, he people said, say, oh boy, pass, oh boy, see, pass. It's letter that you understand that the this is, Nigerians don't want to hear this. You're there to give, to deliver, mm. to give deliverables. Not to give excuses. This is not, this is not time for you to start your eyes on it. We, we passed that stage. Did they expect right? to take people yeah. from Lagos? Yeah, exactly. What about other ministers? This is one year is just gone. It's gone. 
you have two years. And it's because painful. the extra year, the year, the year is the election. Yes, election. election. So if, if we keep having excuses, by this time next year, we keep giving excuses. We can't, we, are, we, are, we, are, we, can, we cannot access funds. We, it's not, it's not easy. We're having challenges. If we continue with excuses, I'm sorry, we're not going to give any deliverables. We, it means we are going to continue this way. What Nigerians want, and what I would expect the, 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 um, the minister to do, if he's having challenges, there's no big deal. Approach the president. Please, can I have one portfolio? It's over, I am overwhelmed. He doesn't need to tell me. Looking at Fashola alone, you should know. It's over, everybody knows he's overwhelmed. But every, because you're talking about housing, you're talking about works, you're talking about power. Tell me of these three ministries, one that is working. None. None. So you can't tell Nigerians he's overwhelmed. If he's going to focus on power, let him focus on power. And this, that, to me, is, is the most important of all these things. that ministry should stand alone. Let it should stand. Should take much, the three of it. You match those ministries and we it. can't get results. So that we can, we, we can stand sit alone. down here. When I was, I watched him, yes, and people who were asking questions were just, they, they couldn't hold it anymore. So you're saying this, uh, uh, the, the, this kind of rubbish is competence, if it is that what I, you're saying? I was going there. Yeah. It has, you know, I said before, I said, it's not too late. You should remove that ego thing. Approach the president, Mr. President. Please, can you remove so so ministries? I want, I can handle this. I can guarantee you that within such a time, Nigerians start seeing results. Because if he doesn't do that, all his legacy is in Lagos here. Mm. It's just a matter mm -hmm. of time. eroded. We, nobody will be talking about. You can yes. see even now, people yes. are beginning to forget what he did yes. in Lagos for his own for his own political for career. His own good. I think it's high time mm -hmm. because we know it's not it's, it's overwhelmed. Hey, Mika, what, what do you think? Because <laughs> I, 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 what Jude said at the other time was. Number one, talking about capital, talking about money to do this project is another big problem. And the principalities and powers that doesn't, I mean, the people that do not really want yeah, the policies. ministers to achieve, yeah. those are people again. But if you remove those <coughs> two factors, if you have money for a project, do you think anything should be overwhelming for anybody? If you have good money and you just do the project without even visiting or you could visit, or it's not overwhelming for you, what do One you think? One of the funny things that um, our leaders you really think is that we have short memories. Mm. Lagos runs on PPP model, public private partnership. So anybody can govern Lagos. Okay. Because a lot of things have been set. The other day the Lagos government body was talking about the Fort Mainland Bridge and he said a consortium you know, is, it has been assembled to handle this thing. And he was talking with confidence because yes. he knew it was going to be achieved. Yes, so you see, when Fashola got there, <coughs> One of the things, ideas he could have sold to the president easily, can we take some of the things we use in Lagos, some of the ideas, and bring them to the federal level? The PPP model, for what, instance. What, what, I think what, you sell it to the president. You, the president will not discuss it. What, what, do you, what makes you think I'll tell the president? No, no. Okay, fine. We have the Nigeria baseline report on energy, which did a lot of, you know, and, uh, which, did, which contains a lot of findings about... The, 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 the problem in the energy, the problems in the energy sector, you know, as such, 2015. And none of these problems have been solved. You have the transmission system in the control of Manitoba. Don't forget, Manitoba of Canada, their contract was extended by one year. Mm -hmm. Now that contract is going to expire on the 31st of and July. Yeah, July 31, not. next month. Yes. And no word from the federal government on whether that contract is going to be no, they, they, they terminated or not. Yeah. Fine, if you're going to terminate it, you're supposed to have written the company three months ahead to say you're going to terminate it. Right now, there's no word on it. Then secondly, fine, he's working with new people, but mm. there is nobody who comes into office with his wife and children, right? I mean, there is nobody, for instance, who comes to a table that is just set when you're coming into a public office. What Fashola needs to do is that he needs to get people who will give him good advice and advise him on different methods, approaching these challenges through different methods. There are court cases. For instance, Lagos by the Expressway yes. uh, project, you know, is in court. There are different parties. But fine, he has chosen the middle line, a nice way to make sure the road is assessed. You know, the road, at least people can use the road, even as the court cases are going on. Going on. Yes, we know in, um, in one of the states in the southeast, <coughs> for instance, he was able to get, uh, okay, where you have the allergy um, past it. Mm -hmm. He was able to get a telecoms company to move, to agree to move his mask away from hmm. the, 
you know, right, you know, the, the, the right of way of the power lines. But mm. again, there are so many issues. So now, one many of the days. things I saw in that Nigeria baseline okay. report is that foreign investors are skeptical about coming into the power sector because the PIB, they look at the PIB, Petroleum Industry Bill, it has not been passed. The so, politics in it. So, so they look so at it like they're putting at their also. money, they are going to be next up. They look at the House of Reps talking about terminating the uh, uh, terminating the sale of the power assets. That means you are going to roll back everything all that the, you are doing. So what I okay. what I just like to do before you before you before you summarize whatever you want to do because we need to let our viewers understand that okay. we have just uh, 30 minutes for the program today because of the live uh, coverage of uh, Muhammad Ali's uh, barrier. So we have to be cautious with time, but let's quickly round up on this so we have enough time to talk about Ali. Uh, in uh, some few uh, seconds, can you just round up? What do you expect now? What should, should the president just think about this once and for all? Just do well, the, 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 we, um, it's going to be difficult for Fashola to say, please, Take some of these ministries, <laughs> you know. The first of that I know, even if we give him ten ministries, him like he would like to appear like somebody who can yes. do everything. And given even the analogy that is uh, <laughs> drawing up, mm. comparing Lagos to the federal level yes. and all that, you know that he will not ask the president to take take it up. Uh, yeah. But the real, the advice really for me is not for first of is for the president. Okay. If you want this man to succeed. Mm -hmm. yes, Take one of those ministries. We can't keep one deceiving ourselves. Uh, one, one, in my view, okay. because look, there's talking about housing. There's really not much that I would do about housing. Mm -hmm. It's private sector. It's, it's supposed to be private sector driven. driven. If you are you are going to build, federal government will not bring money and start building houses for people. So, Jude, what, what portfolios do you think you should get now? They should they should, they should live in with housing and roads where i think is very strong roads, okay. it's very strong on roads they should leave that the power sector needs to stand okay. alone because it is very important it drives every other thing that is related to the progress of our country okay so you cannot bog fashola down by giving him this one giving him that one and if you come up with a model if mm -hmm. the model is not working as mm -hmm. we have seen clearly now mm -hmm then you need to review. We review. should not be rigid about those things. Okay, tell me briefly, the advice now, is it for the president of Fashola himself? And how many ministries do you think Fashola should get? One ministry, please. One, okay. Yes, if you want to, yeah, one ministry. We have... We That's have, a ministry of... Yeah, it can, it, it, no, no power. Okay, no power. No power. We okay. need technocrats in that. Works, we works, need. Works. Yeah, let them take works. Mm. Okay, one Please. No, 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 we like that. I think housing, housing, housing should just be turned to a department. A department. a department or it should be a how many houses do the, <coughs> the, the, does become, the federal government build in a year housing yeah. should become okay. maybe a private sector driven yeah. maybe oh, a yeah. department or a corporation you know where government will sell shares yeah, government, the MDAs. yeah government can sell <laughs> shares. No, no it doesn't have to be an MDA. Oh, banks can get involved now banks can sell shares you can even give the, the housing ministry to the infrastructure bank mm. to run it mm. but basically power where should either you give either power or works to fashion like the two Okay. They are really, I mean, too, okay. too heavy. All right. Quite heavy. And when we return, the world buries Mohammed Ali today. I get her reactions right after the break. Stay with us. As we, Mohammed Ali, the greatest boxer in the history, uh, he's been buried. Ali was a fighter. He fought racism and stood for his beliefs. Uh, throughout his boxing career, Ali fought 61 times and lost only five. At 74, he fought but lost. He lost the fight to Parkinson's disease. Uh, for the last time, the highs of the world is on him today. Everybody wants to see how he would be laid mm -hmm. to rest. Uh, some, night, uh, uh, some might remember him as a boxer, but uh, uh, the three to uh, and, uh, 232 million people that benefited from his meal program will not forget him so soon. The children he personally delivered meals to in Cote d'Ivoire, Indonesia, Mexico and Morocco will remember him as a philanthropist. Uh, Cubans will remember him as a, 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 his a $1 million medical aid among other charity works he did. What lessons should our sportsmen I take from Muhammad Ali. I think uh, he's not even a sportsman. I think people generally, what should we take from Muhammad Ali, even our leaders? Well, um, I believe that people should stand for what they believe in. Mm. And um, 
people should do their best, give their best in any situation. Whether you're a broadcaster or you're a boxer, you must give your best. Mm. You know, you must settle for being the best. You will not settle for being second. You must mm. settle for being the best. And Lee wanted to be special. And he was truly special. In every, in every, every, yeah. Any way you look at mm. it, he was a truly special boxer. And he, he, there, was, there was no one like him before him. And there will never be anyone like After him. You. Many people have tried to recreate his moves. You know, you find someone like Sugar Ray Leonard. He actually copied yes. uh, uh, Mohamed Ali. Mm. Is that his ro uh, is, is ro mm -hmm. uh, 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 rope adobe mm -hmm. style? You know, using the the, the ropes, the using the ropes. You know, you know, as a form of defense and all that, and dancing around the ring, ensuring that the opponent tires out. You want to land a punch on him, he dodges, and you are coming at him with all your with all anger. Right. At the end of the day, you get tired, and Ali will go for those body blows. That was what Sugar Leonard, you know, picked up from Ali. And when you watch Sugar Leonard's fight in 1986 with uh, Marvelous Marvin Agla, hmm. you see clearly that he, he frustrated Marvin Agla throughout. On some occasion, he will be he will be rubbing his gloves on Marvin Agla's <laughs> bald. Uh, <laughs> Uh, bald uh, yeah. uh, head, yeah. you know, because he, he was bald. Mm -hmm. So, but at the end of the day, he won. So Ali was truly special. The only thing I didn't really like about yeah. Ali was that he never showed respect to his opponents. <laughs> he would tell you that I, I'm going to knock you out in round five, <laughs> and, that is and he would try to do do <laughs> knock you out in that round. I told and you. I remember a particular mm -hmm. person that he fought. Mm. That when the guy saw clearly that oh Ali was going to knock him out in that round, that he said, and the press men were waiting, so he, he, he refused to stand up. For, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Ali now said, "Get up, brat! Get up, brat! Get up, brat!" You and know? let me knock you out. Yes. So <laughs> he didn't show respect. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Larry Holmes. <laughs> Larry Holmes. Larry Holmes was no. Uh, your so opponent. Of course, you must show respect <laughs> when you defeat someone. You, you don't kick a man who is down. Oh, yeah, yeah, Larry Holmes yeah. was his sparring partner. Mm -hmm. Ali would tell his opponents, "I, I have a boy who will beat you." <laughs> so it was, if I have a pupil who will beat you, was referring to Larry Holmes. And mm. Larry Holmes eventually became world champion. He even beat Muhammad Ali on October 2, 1980. Mm. And after beating Muhammad Ali, he burst into tears. He said, you made me who I am. Mm. I regret fighting you. Wonderful. You know? But Ali wanted to <laughs> show yeah. that I could beat him. He said, I'm, I'm still the teacher, you are the pupil. When when one of his uh, events uh, from, uh, the, for, for Muhammad Ali celebrating Ali's uh, exit, uh, one of the brothers there, the brethren said, uh, aspire, inspire before you expire. And really, uh, Ali achieved everything. He aspired, he inspired, he aspired before he expired, really. Uh, what kind of man do you think Ali was? Uh, oh, Ali was, um, was um, yeah, a world ambassador. Um, rest, highly respected across the world. Mm. Because the moment the news broke, you know, the world was on fire. Mm -hmm. I, I saw... Mm -hmm. The media, media, the media outlets across the world, giving they gave him all the day, you know, and talking about Muhammad Ali. He tells you a legend just mm -hmm. dropped. Uh, he was uh, resilient. He was courageous, focused, and dogged in his quest to attain greatness in sports development mm -hmm. through boxing. And and even out, world, uh, outside sport again, he outside was, sport, yeah, it was, was, was a fantastic was orator. Fantastic orator. Yeah. He a philanthropist. Was, he knows exactly what's going on. He a religious man also. He yeah, aspired yeah, to yeah, make yeah, it. I saw, I saw mm, his mm, around mm, there. Mm. I think um, he was given a, a befitting. So it's going okay. to be a tree like killer and a chiller yeah, when I like beat he, that gorilla in, in Manila. Manila. <laughs> 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 and again, you know what caught me again? You know uh, Bill Crystal, the comedian, is going to be one of those uh, 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 reeling out the tributes uh, for Muhammad Ali. Mm. You know what he said? He was a soldier. He said a fighter that couldn't fight. Uh, talking about him not joining the army then and ali should have been should have made a lovely soldier but he said he wasn't fighting and he stood by it mm -hmm. he didn't, he didn't believe he in did the not Vietnam believe war. in it when he was meant to be at least yeah but some weeks ago u.s president barack obama was in vietnam mm. to close that ugly chapter so in a way ali was vindicated mm. Ali was vindicated, you know. It was a needless war. He was a, a needless war. <coughs> Don't forget, Ali was a great fighter. Yes. But he believed in fighting, it not cost. to shed blood, not to kill, but to, to knock advance you out. causes. <laughs> yes, of yes. course. Boxing was a sport. Yes. 
Yes, boxing gave him his, yeah. it was his source of livelihood. Mm -hmm. But again, he made boxing a lovable sport. He, he, he made it enjoyable. You know, people came to enjoy boxing because he brought a lot of an art. Yeah, yeah, he brought a lot of drama yes, into boxing. Yeah, he brought a lot of life. You know, and he even made the fit has. He even fused boxing with entertainment. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you see people, a lot of people who didn't like those heavy, heavy punches loved the entertaining side. Mm. You know, all those is great quotes. So you see Ali not going to the Vietnam War. Yes. Well, a man has to believe in his convictions. Yes. But again, a man who doesn't want to shed blood and all of that, you know, but turned around to affect humanity in different, in, in, ways. In different ways. I think the man did well. What we see now is the life feed from Louisville uh, where it should be laid to rest at the Cave Hill Cemetery uh, later today. Uh, as in, it's like a... <laughs> A welcome back home thing for Ali, a tribute for him, really. He went to the first gym, he trained, he went to the, the, the college he went to then, as in the, the cops had gone through a whole lot. Mm -hmm. what, the people today, the, even the kids then, that never even knew who Ali was. Wow. Today, they're going to have the yeah. privilege. Line the street. Yeah, yeah. in the street. And uh, uh, you, know, you know the funniest or the, the most beautiful part of this? Ali had planned this before he died. That's the yeah, kind of person. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, man. Oh, gentlemen, we need to go. Uh, in conclusion, a message for the people concerning Ali. Yeah, let's, let's post men work hard. Let's post men dare to be different. Mm. Hopefully, we'll have someone great like Ali. But maybe, not maybe not greater than Ali. <laughs> because even basketball, <laughs> I believe that basketball will never find anyone like Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. So, mm. maybe we'll find someone great like him, but not greater than him. Okay, a message to yeah, for so the world. Uh, 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 Mohamed Ali's story, um, you know, is encouraging, and um, people should tap from it, especially, um, it tells us that um, we, ne we should never give up, that once we are, we, we, we are committed to a goal, we, we can achieve it. Okay. It's achievable once okay. you're committed and you're courageous about it. Okay, Focus. what do you think? Yeah. Yeah, the interesting thing is that <coughs> Muhammad Ali lived in a society where he didn't expect him to be as great as mm. this. With all the discrimination. You know the story with, about him starting boxing? Yeah, were boxing. Talking about it before yeah, before. someone stole his bike Biden. and he said he will go and <laughs> learn how to box and when he gets the person, he will promote the, the person. Guy. And funny enough, that became the, you know, his uh, career path. But again, we look at it. A country like Nigeria, if Ali grew up in Nigeria, had grown up in Nigeria, would he have been mm, so famous? Would he have been so successful? Wouldn't the system have frustrated him? Mm. We have Stephen Keshi lying in the mortuary right now. How did we treat him? Ali had his yes, Gide said talked about how many times he yeah. fought, how many times he won, and how many times he lost. But do we don't have we, we we're too temperamental when people, you know, begin to mm. You know, have some challenges. When I mean somebody like Anali loses, oh, we just write him off. Yeah. No, 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 no. I know. He should, you know, he's he's finished. Mm -hmm. And then look at Keshi. How was Stephen Keshi treated? Nigerian sports administrators should take a lesson from this. Okay. They should go and look at the factors that made Ali great. Mm -hmm. And the fact that sports is one of the pillars on which the American society stands. It okay. helps people people from disadvantaged communities, people from backwaters. Mm. You see them coming them to, heroes. To, the, you know, mm. to, to the limelight through sports. Okay. Let us also try. Let's take the people in the backwaters, in those neglected communities. Give them hope. Let's give them hope. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's them hope. point them to Mohamed Ali and say you can be you as great can as be you can. Great. will be greater. Yeah. And we'll give them life. Okay, thank you. My own take, aspire, inspire before, before you, you expire. expire. Thank you so much. Robert Jide, Koladio, Titoju, Tony, Huajay. And then make a margin out this week. It's been a lovely one hanging out with you guys. And that's all the journalists hang out. Join us next week for more interesting episodes of the program. And watch the repeat broadcast tonight at 11. You can also watch journalists hang out on YouTube at youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. I am Dapo Aruaje. Our special coverage on Mohamed Ali's barrier continues. Bye for now. <laughs>